My biggest breakthrough recently has been using AI for automated data entry. And by the end of this video, you're gonna know how to use the world's most powerful AI tool, Claude 3, for automating your data entry process. This will be especially useful for business owners looking to streamline their operations, data analysts aiming to reduce errors and save time, and entrepreneurs seeking new in-demand service offerings. What I'm about to show you represents a massive revenue opportunity automating data entry across many different services and industries. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to launch a data entry automation business on your own. Many people I talk to struggle with using AI for data entry automation so if that's you you are definitely not alone I found this usually happens because folks don't understand what's going on behind the scenes and find it hard to cut through the hype and get something actually working and that's what today's video is all about in this example I'm gonna show you how to create an AI tool that streamlines data entry for Salesforce and many other different opportunities you can use this process for the process we're gonna walk through today starts with finding an example file this could be a CSV or a JSON file that is suitable to import into your system and after that we're going to create some data validation rules so defining the criteria for acceptable data entries and identifying required fields and any other conditional requirements after that testing is key here so running that sample data through the large language model uh, and then eventually into your system ideally in a test environment then the next step there would be automating all of that with api we're going to touch upon that as well and then at the end of the video i want to go through a bunch of ideas on how to start a business in this area this i think is one of the most lucrative ways to use AI in the near term. Folks with, you know, very little startup funding, I think could start a very, very profitable company here. And I want to share all of my thoughts and prompts and steps on doing that. But for now, I'm jumping into the cheat sheet here. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I create a cheat sheet for every video that I create. These are all immediately available to anybody who supports me on Patreon. There is a link in the description to that. There are over 80 cheat sheets in there. And I'm just gonna start with this very first prompt here for finding uh, CSV files that are appropriate for our Salesforce data entry uh, example here. So I'm just copying and pasting this right into Perplexity. And Perplexity, as usual, has done an amazing job finding all sorts of resources. This one here in particular has helped me find this sample CSV file that will be very helpful for today's example. And now I want to take a super messy email string here that has all sorts of crazy information back and forth. And we're going to use Claude to format this into something we can just automatically import right into Salesforce. These are all anonymized emails, so don't worry about that. Uh, but these are a conversation back and forth about a potential Salesforce opportunity. I'm going to use this data processing prompt to upload that email string into Claude and begin to process this information into something we can load into Salesforce. So I'm simply copying and pasting that prompt into Claude along with that massive messy email string. I don't know if you can see it down here. It has added it down there. Let's run this and see what it pulls from that email string. Fantastic. It's creating multiple different artifacts now from that email string for the different types of uploads that you can do in the Salesforce update wizard. And it's giving us a little uh, summary of everything that happened in that email string. So you can imagine lazy salespeople really loving this process. And I say lazy salespeople with love as I come from a long, long line of salespeople in my family. It looks like it's formatted this a little bit differently than the example file. So I'm just saying, can you please format these to match the attached example file? This was the one we grabbed from Perplexity. And it has gone ahead and done that, matching our example exactly. Now we're getting into data validation. You can see in the cheat sheet here, there's a lot of different prompts about creating these different data validation rules. I'm just dropping one of those in here to get Claude to generate some data validation rules. Now I'm asking it, can you please run these on the data? 
So it has now run all of those data validation rules. Obviously, if you're doing this for a business, you wanna make sure to get uh, very comfortable with those data validation rules. You can also imagine ways of automating these and flagging uh, different uh, rules here, different errors that it throws back. But now you can see in just a few prompts, we've gone from a very messy email string to a whole group of files that are ready to import into Salesforce and have been screened by various data validation rules. I've got a lot more prompts in here about data validation rules as I think that is one of the most important parts of the process. There's also some for just general sanity checks. So these are different than data validation because they check not only uh, is it possible, but you know, does it really make sense? So these two can be very helpful to make sure you're not getting any bad information into the system. Just to close the loop, I wanna show you how easy it is to import this data right into Salesforce. You go up here and click this little gear, click on setup. That takes you here. I like to search for import wizard. Click on import my data. These are contacts, individuals. I have that CSV file created by Claude. I'm uploading that file and I'm ready to finish my import here. And there you have it. There's also a complete guide in the cheat sheet about using the Salesforce import wizard. If you're doing a lot with Salesforce, you might want to check out demand base as this product allows you to make proper connections between the contacts and the different accounts that are in your system. If you've got a process working where you're able to validate all the data and get it imported into whatever system you're entering the data into, the next step is to do the API automation. We're not going to cover that extensively in this video. If you'd like a video, on that just let me know in the comments but the basic gist of it is that you want to choose an appropriate large language model API that can be open AI that can be Claude it can be almost any of the frontier models then you want to develop scripts that interact with that API I would use uh, Claude personally to develop those scripts then you want to implement error handling for the API calls set up a system to queue up large bulk processes and then create logs for tracking the performance of any issues you've encountered. You want to implement some ways that humans can get into the loop for any uh, exceptions that are popping up and consider implementing different feedback loops to continuously improve the large language model's performance. But now I want to talk a little bit more about what you can do with this information. So I believe strongly that this is one of the best ways uh, any entrepreneur can start generating revenue with AI. Here's a high level approach of how you might do that. Just identifying some market research. I'm going to show you some examples of what I think are the hottest niches here. Developing an expertise in those different niches. Ideally, this is in an industry you already understand well. You'll be ahead of the game there then you just need to build your tech stack and refine some of the processes that I've just gone through. Then you need to create a business plan, make sure that you've got a pilot project in your back pocket that you can show people, then get into marketing and sales. I think that LinkedIn would be a great place to start talking about this. YouTube would probably be my second choice to start promoting this type of business. And then just looking for continuous improvements, finding a project that worked well and scaling that up over and over to all different people in that industry. In the cheat sheet here, I have a list of a bunch of the hottest areas that I think are ripe for this type of business. The customer information input, this is what we just went through, entering information into CRM systems like Salesforce. Also invoice processing, inventory management, survey data entry, medical records digitization is a huge one, especially if you have a little bit of expertise in that area. But the number one I think that I would focus on is this e-commerce product listings. I get a lot of questions about this. Um, if you think about it, these different manufacturers are creating all different types of products and the people who sell these on these drop ship e-commerce websites need a way to take the manufacturer's information and convert it into something that they can just automatically post on their website. And there's a lot of manual process now happening by converting those um, descriptions on the manufacturer's products into things that can upload into the website. I think you can easily automate that and build a great business that way. But there is a lot more in here for you to check out. Like I said, there is a link to this cheat sheet in the um, 
description of this video and if you got something out of this video make sure to subscribe i'm looking at my uh analytics and the vast majority of people watching these videos have not subscribed so please if you're watching this subscribe it's very helpful in helping me in my mission to uh teach about these large language models to anyone and everyone who wants to learn uh, so if you haven't subscribed do that already thanks a ton for watching check out the patreon if you're interested in that and I will see you on the next video.